so we can like go ahead and get started um so my name is fluffy and i am of course the streamer from fluffy mcbutt nugget so um i am i decided to do a true crime podcast um in which i tell you guys a story a fun little story and while i tell you guys the story i play some minecraft um we got a cute little bumblebee wow beautiful um so i'm really excited that you're here today and i really can't wait to tell y'all a interesting and uh it is sad but an interesting story so um without further ado i will go ahead and get started so i just want to welcome you guys and say hello and thank you so much for coming by um to this stream i will warn you guys i'm probably not going to be too too active in chat um but um there will be times where i definitely will be um looking and seeing what you guys have wrote and what your opinions are hello hunter hello hello thank you so much for coming by um, but there will be times that I uh, do come by uh, chat and see what's going on. So, um, I just wanted to let you guys know that this will be a mature stream. My Twitch already has a mature warning on it. Um, but just in case uh, you guys didn't see it, uh, this isn't for kids. I will be talking about murder um, I will be talking about really upsetting subjects, and so this just isn't something that kiddos should see. Uh, I also want to give a uh, trigger warning, um, because there will be instances of domestic violence, um, like I said, murder, gore. Hey, Miz, hello, hello, how are you? Thank you for stopping by. Um, like I said, this, you know, this is your trigger warning, this is your content warning, because um, things will not be peachy in this stream. We're going to be talking about some serious subjects. Um, I also wanted um, Ms. Crimecraft is a live stream about um, true crime. And we're going to do some gaming. So thank you so much for joining. I'm doing well. Um, so I did want to let you guys know that in my overlay, um, which you should be able to see... Um, I do have the domestic violence hotline and suicide, uh, the national suicide hotline. Um, if you are not from America and you need other hotlines, we can definitely hook you up with those hotlines. Um, and lastly, I want to say that we are raising money for the Family Safety Center. So the Family Safety Center actually... Um, this might give you a little bit of a hint as to what we'll be talking about. But the Family Safety Center is a um, nonprofit near me that deals with um, intimate partner violence uh, or domestic violence. But they don't just help um, uh, heterosexual couples. They are LGBTQ friendly. So I, my goal is to raise $100 today and all bits from today's stream will be going towards um, this goal. I will be uh, putting that towards the goal. So um, without further, further ado, let's uh, go ahead and introduce what we'll be talking about today. I know some people have been pretty excited to learn about um, what I'm going to be talking about. So today we will be talking about the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Um, for those of you who are from America, I'm sure that you have heard plenty about um, this murder. Um, even if you're not from America, you probably have heard tons about this. Um, usually you hear about another person, but you, you know, right now we're not going to be talking about that person. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. So Nicole Brown Simpson was actually born in Frankfurt, Germany, and I had no idea about that. I learned that from the documentary that I got a lot of my information from, um, 
so she was born in May 19th, 1959 in Frankfurt, Germany. And I was pretty uh, shocked to find out that um, her dad was in the army and he did some, um, pro uh, he was a publisher for something called Stars and Stripes, which is a little, um, it's like a little, I guess, newspaper that they had. And um, so they were in Frankfurt for that. Um, and um, so they lived in Germany because of her father. And um, soon after they were in Germany, they had, uh, Nicole's parents had her, and then they had Denise, which is Nicole's sister. Um, and then they finally decided to move to the good old U.S. of A., um, so when they moved to USA, they moved to California, um, and they were in Garden Grove, California. Not sure exactly where that is, but I've heard good things. Heard it's, you know, a nice little area. There's a beach and, um, just a little nice area. So they moved there. And as Nicole grew up, she really enjoyed the beach. Uh, she was a beach girl, and her sister reported that um, she would be on the beach pretty much constantly. So, um, when Nicole was growing up, she started really enjoying photography, which is something that I had no idea about, um, and I just, I thought that was really cool to find out that she loved photography and she wanted to be a photographer. So, um, when she got older, she moved to, um, LA to pursue this dream of photography and, to, um, to get uh, a little bit more financially stable, she, she decided to work at a club. So she started working at a local club to make some money, and this is where she met Arenthal James Simpson, also known as O.J. Simpson. So when she, um, when she met him, they started uh, dating pretty soon, and um, so that's where that story starts. So we're going to take a little pause, and we're going to go to Ron Goldman. We're going to start talking a little bit about him and give you some information about Ron Goldman. So there's unfortunately not a lot of information about Ron, um, which to me is really, really sad. Um hello Maria hello hello um yeah I this case is it's it's really well known um but there's things I just never knew about that um that I'll definitely be sharing with you guys so yeah um I, I'm it, it's really sad though um so I'll get you know a little more into it but um a lot of people don't know much about Ron Goldman. There's a lot of assumptions about who he was as a person, but there's just not a lot of information. Um, so what I did get was from his um, sister and um, reports on the internet about him. So Ron was born in a suburb in Chicago, uh, and he was born on July the 2nd, 1968. So that is one year before um, a certain someone in my life was born, um, aka my mom. <laughs> um, so he would be around the same age as my mom, um, which is just, you know, it's like, it, it's crazy to think, you know, um, you know, no spoilers, but uh, he, you know, would still be alive today and probably doing really well. So um, he was born in July uh, 1968, and he grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. And um, his parents were divorced, but he was raised by his father. And um, his father, you know, was a really big part of his life, and so was his sister. And uh, excuse me, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but he was reportedly a very kind, very selfless person. Um, so let's go back. Let's backtrack a little bit. And let's go back to Nicole. 
So OJ was actually married when he met Nicole, which, um, you know, it happens. But they started falling really hard, really fast for each other. And um, they started dating, of course. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but OJ was actually married when they met. Um, I might have definitely just mentioned it, but, you know, it happens. <laughs> um, OJ was married to his first wife. Um, and he did have a child with his first wife. Um, so they were dating for seven or eight years before they finally decided to tie the knot. Um, the uh, Nicole's sister, which was in the documentary, reported that the wedding was just absolutely beautiful. Like you could tell in the way she was describing it, um, there was just so much love and so much happiness at this wedding um which to me just just it just makes this this story like eight million times more heartbreaking uh, i'm not gonna lie so um they got married and the sister also reported you know like when they were you know at the wedding they had one of those like fancy you know dancey fun weddings um, which, you know, in the South, uh, my parents' wedding, they got married in 92. Um, my parents' wedding was not very dancey. <laughs> uh, my parents aren't big dancers. So like, it was just one of those like really fun, fun filled, um, weddings. And the sister reported, Nicole's sister was like, I just remember us all singing, we are family and everyone was just so happy. So, um, life for them after marriage was like, was, was just dreamlike, of course, you know, they had their little honeymoon phase, um, they were happy and they actually had a child in 1985. Uh, this child's name was Sydney, um, and Nicole was so thrilled to have Sydney. She loved being a mother. She, she loved her daughter so much. Um, and things were just really wonderful. And then they had Justin a few years later, which, uh, was their son. So life was, um, life was really great for them. Hunter, does this case get mentioned in the OG Simpson doc on Netflix? There, I think there's a documentary, um, I'm not sure which one you're talking about, but, um, this, it, it's probably definitely discussed, but they probably discuss a little bit more about OJ. Uh, they kind of focus a lot on him, um, sometimes and I'm just not really a huge fan of that there is a documentary though that I really like it's more it's not really a documentary but it's a show um called the trial um and I can definitely mention that later so um just remind me and we can talk about that because it's about the trial uh, I think it's called people versus OJ Simpson and that was it's a it's a fantastic um reenactment of the trial uh, hi, Bongo. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming by. So, so life was perfect for um, Nicole and Ron, or Jesus, Nicole and OJ. Um, and um, unfortunately, it looked perfect from the outside, but on the inside, it uh, inside their home, it just wasn't that great. Um, unfortunately, Nicole was being severely abused at home. I'm not sure when the abuse started, but, um, one of the most, uh, notable instances I will definitely be talking about. Um, so on the, um, on January 1st of 1989, which is the year my husband was born, so it's not too, too long ago. Um, on January 1st, the uh, police in uh, California got a call uh, for domestic abuse. A woman was incredibly frantic on the phone. Um, she was crying hysterically 
and um, so they came out and when they got there a woman um, well actually you know what let's get there um, when they got there the um, the police were told that nothing was wrong so they buzzed the intercom and they said or um, they buzzed the intercom and someone told them oh everything's fine you can go home thankfully the police actually did their job um, in this case um, and they said no you know we can't leave we've got to check in on things and at that time at that time is when um, a girl comes out of the bushes and she's sobbing she's hysterical um, so this is when Nicole, you know, runs to the police and she says, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me over and over again. And when they're asking, you know, what's wrong, she says something that just fucking strikes me. She said, you never do anything about him. You talk to him and then you leave. That, when I heard that, I just, I lost my shit. Uh, I think I, I, I'm trying to remember where I read it and I will definitely give my sources, of course, um, like a good researcher would, um, but where I read that, when I read that, I was just absolutely just, I was just shocked, um, so the party friends, uh, the friends that were at the party said, um, that they saw OJ hit her, kick her, punch her, and he slapped her so hard that there was a print of his hand on her neck um and I, I just I don't I, I don't understand that like I, I mean I get it obviously but I just I don't <laughs> how hard do you have to fucking hit someone you know what I'm saying like how hard do you have to hit someone to leave a print like that um so this wasn't it, it wasn't nothing obviously um and later on we find out that the person who said that everything was peachy, everything was fine, was actually the housekeeper. It was not Nicole. So it was just a big fat lie. Um, so this police report came in around 3.30 a.m. Um, and thankfully, like I said, the police did demand to see her. Um, so after this um, instance of abuse, which of course there were more, um, but after this instance of abuse, um, OJ did go to court for this. However, he was able to, uh, weasel himself out, which, um, you know, when you have good lawyers, it just, it's disgusting, but it happened. And also it was the nineties. So it's just, it's unfortunate. Um, but that is how, you know, that went. So, OJ, um, people wanted him to go to jail for this, but he, and they wanted him also to go to, like, an abuser's counseling, which, um, in my line of work, I have actually, I've never been able to go, but I do know of, um, some places that do, um, counseling, like, group therapy for, um, people who have abused other, um, women. So, um, thank you for asking that question, Thomas. I'm getting to that, uh, right now, actually. <laughs> um, so this punishment that he got, are y'all fucking ready? He was fined 700 fucking dollars. Um, and he was told to go to a, um, Sorry, I'm trying to find this light. He was told to go to a, um, a counseling session, which was online. Uh, not online, I'm sorry, over the phone. Um, and guys, this is 1994. Um, this isn't 2021 where there's, you know, a coronavirus pandemic. He was perfectly capable of going to fucking counseling sessions or group therapy sessions. Um, but he was just able to weasel himself out because he was rich. So, um, and of course $700 for him was just absolutely, it was nothing. He was fucking rich. He had all the money in the fucking world. Okay. So, um, that was, you know, a big, 
a big loss, you know, for, for her. She, he didn't get punished, and she was able to just do what, uh, he was able to do what he wanted, basically, without any type of, um, repercussion, because he, you know, honestly, all he had to do was go to these counseling sessions, and she's like, okay, yeah, and, um, so it's just really sad, um, however, very soon after, Nicole told her sister, she actually presented the divorce papers to her sister, um, and she was like, look, I'm divorcing him, so she did what everyone is like, why didn't you do that, she fucking did it, she left, and in 1992, um, they were divorced, so, we are going to, oh my goodness, I'm typing that, goodness gracious, so, we're going to move on, we're fast forwarding to June 12th, 1994, okay, guys, we're doing an age check, June 12th, 1994, where were you? Because I can tell you where the fuck I was. Um, my mother was, we're going to have some little bees here. My mother was pregnant. She was heavily pregnant. And I think she was, let me do the math, because I had it down and I definitely, I lost it. Um, you, was, you weren't here just yet. You're right. You're right. Because you're, you're a lot younger. So 28 minus 12. My mother was 16 days away from giving birth. Okay. Baby Yahiel was one day old. Oh dear. Thomas was a little less than a month old, okay, and then Hunter, you two, we were belly pals, we were chilling in the belly, okay, so yes, my mom was heavily, heavily pregnant, and um, I'll probably get into this more later, but dude, y'all, this was all my mom and dad knew um, because of the fucking hospital, like when you're in the hospital, you, you have a TV, and you only have a few channels because there's no Dish Network. And even now, there's, like, not Dish Network or anything. So, or, like, satellite. Um, and there was no computers. You couldn't bring your Netflix. So, um, I think this bee just moved me. It just moved me. Okay. You all give me a second, guys. Um, little bee friends. So, fast forwarding. June 12th, 1994. Um, aren't they cute? The bees are absolutely precious. Um, and I don't know how, if someone can tell me how to breed them, I want baby bees, um, please. Um, so, Sydney, um, like I said, their youngest daughter, um, she was a little, little girl. I'm not sure how old. I believe she might have been eight years old at the time. Don't quote me on that, though. Um, Sydney had a dance recital on this date. Um, everyone went, you know, um, Nicole, like I said, was like a really big family girl. So um, everybody, it was like a family event. It kind of reminds me of my sister who does dance. Um, when she has a dance recital, you know, everybody went. So um, I don't know how to do this. My mom just said... Yes, Maria. Yes, absolutely. Yes, literally exactly. That's my mother's experience and my mom and dad's experience as well. Um, so 100% relatable. Oh, I hit a B. Um, I hit a B. I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry. I would never. I, okay. Um, anyways, as I was saying, um, so everyone went, including OJ. Oh, they're in the they're in the bee nest. Okay, have fun, guys. Y'all are so precious. Um, bees, 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 bees. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm just really upset right now. Um. Okay. So Sydney, this bee won't move out of my way. So Sydney had the dance recital and OJ did go. They were co-parenting, which is fantastic. Uh, in my line of work, we do love to see co-parenting. So they were co-parenting. Um, and after the recital, 
Um, I guess their recitals weren't like my sister's recitals um, and like five hours long. <laughs> so um, after the recital, they all decided to go out to eat and they went to a restaurant called the Mezzaluna. And this is where Mr. Ron Goldman will be coming in to the scene. So they went to the Mezzaluna and guess who wasn't invited because he was a fucking asshole. It was OJ. So OJ was not invited because he uh, was an abuser, rightfully so. Um, Nicole, you know, put her foot down. Um, like a lot of people, you know, they're like, why didn't you leave him? Okay, she fucking did. She left him, she put her foot down, she was like, you're not, you know, welcome here. She let him see, um, her, his daughter, um, and he was still able to be an active member of his children's lives, but when they went out to eat, um, he was not invited. Um, he was pissed the fuck off, um, which I get that, um, but when, you know, the things that happen later, it's, yeah, so, now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of shift into a timeline, because I think it's really, really important, um, into, like, looking at the case, um, let's do, let's Roy, she was strong, she was a really strong woman, and she had really wonderful supports with her as well, um, this is her, Roy G. Biv. I'm going to make a rainbow. I know we're talking about a terrible subject, but we're going to make a fucking rainbow. Um, so she was a strong woman and she had, she had her family behind her to help her be strong as well. So they went to the Mezzaluna. They had a great dinner. And like I said, we're going to go Roy G. Roy, hold on, red, orange, yellow, G, blue, okay, we're done now, I'm so sorry, um, she, so, okay, 6.30 p.m., Nicole and her family, they went to dinner, they went to the Mezzaluna, they're at the Mezzaluna, 8 o'clock p.m., so they're done, Nicole, her, Nicole's family leaves, and then Nicole and her children, they get ice cream together, which just, it, it fucking breaks my heart because she's just like a wonderful mom who is trying to make the best for her children. And, um, so they go and get ice cream together at 8 PM. So at 9 15, they realize that, uh, Nicole's mom forgot her glasses. Um, my mom, I, I just like, I, I always like to put myself in other people's shoes. Um, my mom forgets absolutely fucking everything. And honestly, same. Um, I also forget everything. So I just think about like, what if this is my mom, you know, and I was just trying to look out for her. And anyways, this is what happens. So 9.15, realize mom's glasses are at the Mezzaluna. We're going to backtrack a little. We're going to shift gears and we're going to OJ, okay? So 9 p.m. to 9.30. And, and the reason we're going to OJ, by the way, is because obviously he's a suspect um, in this murder. Um, so OJ and his friend Brian Kalen, who I believe was living with them at that time, with him, OJ, um, go to McDonald's. Um, at 9.45 p.m., they return home with McDonald's in hand. Um, we're switching gears again, and we're going to, now we're going to Mr. Ron Goldman. So... Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about how Ron and, um, Nicole know each other. So, um, there is this, I don't know what put this in my fucking head at the time, but I believed when I was younger that Nicole and Ron were having like an affair and they were lovers and that's just not fucking true. 
Um, they were just friends. Sometimes Nicole, Nicole was just a badass bitch. Um, and she had a Ferrari and she would let, uh, Ron borrow her Ferrari sometimes to show off to his friends. They used to work out together. They got coffee together and they were just pals. Like, I just think of like myself and like my friend Thomas, like they were just pals. I don't even think they were as close as Thomas and I, but they were just acquaintances. Um, of course I would never work out though. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, they were just really good friends. So she said, Hey dude, Ron works there. Let's call Ron and see if he can deliver the glasses. So she calls Ron and um, at 9.48 to 9.50 p.m., Ron Goldman leaves the Metzaluna to deliver those glasses to uh, Nicole so that she can give them to her mom. So we're going to um, kind of go to Nicole now around 10.15 so, like, just kind of really pay attention to these times because they're pretty sus, okay? Uh, 10.15, neighbors hear a dog barking constantly. It's whining. It's upset. They don't really pay attention because, look, dogs are fucking crazy sometimes. They do shit. They cry. They whine. Shit happens, right? So, we're going shifting gears again. Bear with me. We're going back to OJ. So, OJ orders his limo. This was a, a while ago, though. Um, and at 10.25, OJ's limo driver arrives. Um, then around 10.40, Kaylin, which is OJ's friend that he was hanging out with, hears three thumps outside his room. And then the limo driver buzzes the house, but no one, no one answers. Um, so he's like, what the fuck's happening? Like, come on, answer, you know. So no one's answering. So the limo driver is a good guy and he calls his boss. He's like, yo, OJ is not answering. Um, what do I do? What the fuck? What do I do? Because let's just pick this guy up. He's not answering. <clears throat> what do I do? So his boss says, look, he sleeps all the time. He's always freaking late. Just wait till 1115. So around 10, um, 1055 is when he makes that call, um, to his, to his boss just before 11 o'clock. Okay. The limo driver sees a two, let's say, I think he says around 200 pound, six foot African American male walking um, across the driveway of the property and he's going towards the house. So, um, so he sees that, doesn't really pay attention to it because like, it's just whatever. He's just there for his fucking job, right? He's waiting for OJ um, no big deal, right? So, soon after that, the limo driver buzzes the intercom, and, um, OJ finally answers, and he's like, yo, dude, I'm really sorry, I overslept and was taking a shower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 11.15, they go to the airport, uh, in LA, and 11.45, O.J. Simpson is on his way to Chicago, Illinois, um, and he's gone. He is out of L.A. So, unfortunately, around 12.10, um, the bodies of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman are found. Um, like I said, they were found, though. Um, the time of murder, um, I, I don't actually have that information with me. But, um, let's just remember, let's go back to when those dogs were, um, were barking. Um, those dogs started barking, let's see, uh, 10, 15. And that gives plenty of time for, you know, things to happen. Um, 
so let's switch perspectives we're going to the police um yeah i am yes two people were murdered um and the reason that ron i'll tell you why i think that ron was murdered but i'll, I'll get to that in a second but yeah i'm making a rainbow just because it's really cute it's really pretty it's a little road a little rainbow road um and it's happy and it's just it's relaxing so um that's a really long rainbow road um yes it was not just nicole it was ron goldman as well um so at 1209 dispatch is called um the patrolman is flagged down by two witnesses and those two witnesses are accompanied by a dog on a leash uh let's remember what was happening remember there is a um there was that you know report there, there was a dog going crazy and i'll get to my theory I, um about what i think happened um so they find the bodies of nicole and ron i don't recommend that you look up the crime scene photos they're really upsetting it's i i have a i'm a dumbass i'm not gonna lie and i look up photos and i saw them and it's just fucking heartbreaking it's infuriating and that's why i'm so pissed off about this case because like i said please don't please don't look it up but when you see the injuries uh, which I will describe um, a little bit. You can tell that there was hatred, there was anger. Um, it, it, it was just brutal and it was disgusting. Um, so they find the bodies of Nicole and Ron. Uh, Nicole was stabbed 12 times. And uh, I'm just giving you a content warning right now. Uh, what I'm about to say is upsetting. So if you don't like to hear gross, please you know, like mute, um, Nicole had her throat slit so deeply that she was almost decapitated, um, Ron was stabbed 20 times, and he still had the glasses in his hand, um, hello Callie, <laughs> Callie is very excited because no scrubs is here, um, so it's it's just fucking sad it's it's really sad um and it, it, it was just brutal so she, Callie's pretty fucking pissed about this she Callie does not like um murder hers upset um so the police went inside and investigated and they did not find any sign of a struggle when they were doing their investigation. Um, and there was no evidence at all that a fight took place outside either. So, um, or inside, I'm so sorry. So the police go in and this is just the worst fucking part. They go in and they, um, they take the children because the children are in that house, which makes this story just, even more fucking infuriating yes yes um maria i'm definitely gonna get to that shit about the fucking glasses because that makes me it, it makes me sad it makes me so fucking sad um so they took the children out and they took them to the police station and little sydney was such a smart and sweet little girl and according to one of the police officers um, whose reputation wasn't completely ruined, which we'll talk about later. Um, little sweet Sydney said to the police officer, I don't know what's going on here, but I want my mommy to come pick me up because it's a school night. Uh, and that broke my fucking heart because she just, she, she wants her mom to pick her up. It's a school night. Yeah, it's, it's really fucking sad. Um, she was probably eight years old. Um, so that's, it, it, yeah, that's how that night went. So, um, yeah, when children are involved, it's, it's really sad. Uh, and that's just what makes this case so much more infuriating is, um, is that that, that happened. Um, 
thankfully I don't believe that she I don't I didn't hear that she saw anything um or her or Justin because both of them were there um but yeah it's, it's a heartbreaking thing so um, they went to notify Mr. O.J. Simpson, the um, ex-husband of Nicole, and they notice that he's not there. But guess what they also notice? They also notice um, that there's blood on his vehicle. And they also notice that there is a bloody glove on the property of O.J. Simpson. So... Um, they're like, hey, that's a little fucking suspect. So, um, they try to get in contact with him there, and they're like, oh, he's not here. He's in fucking Chicago. So, hey, like, it is circumstantial evidence, but that's a little bit fucking sus. So, um, five days later, um, well, obviously, um, yes, the fucking glove, Maria, the glove, it is there. Um, so, obviously, um, they make this a crime scene, um, and they're like, hey, we've got to get this shit, you know, like, together, and they charge O.J. Simpson with two counts of murder, and they, they do this five days after the murders. Um, did O.J. like this? No, he didn't. He did not take it very well at all, um... And so this is when the famous chase comes into play. So at 6.45 p.m., they see um, Al, Al, I can't fucking talk, Al Cowlings driving a white Ford Bronco. Here, if you guys know anything about this case, I'm sure that you know about this. Um... They see the white Bronco, and they notice that O.J. Simpson is in the back of the car. So, a chase ensues. And I don't know if you guys have seen, like, car chases, but, like, um, if you've seen a car chase, let me know, like, what they usually look like. How, what do they look like? Tell me a little. Because this one was different. And it was weird and crazy. Car chases um, usually are pretty crazy and they're fast and everyone's rushing around and there's police everywhere and everyone's pulled over to the side of the road, right? Um, Well, this one was different because um, OJ's friend was driving probably about 25 miles an hour on the freeway in California, and, um, the freeway in California, you don't go 25 miles an hour, so people hear about this, that he's being chased on, um, on the freeway, and people start to stop, so there are people on the side of the road cheering OJ on, they have signs, they are screaming, and they're, excuse me, they are cheering for O.J. Simpson. Now, some people probably regret this and they didn't know, you know, what was really happening. Um, but yeah, they're cheering their, this famous football player on while he escapes. And he is in the back of the car um, threatening suicide and wanting to call his mom. Um, and yeah, imagine claiming innocence and fucking zooming out. Yeah, it's pretty sus. Um very sus. So 95 million people watched this chase ensue. 95 million. Um, and it became one of the most famous, um, the most famous things that happened like in the United States of America, because it was just like a cultural reset. Everyone knew about it. Um, it was just crazy. Um, so 95 million people watched that, and eventually they did end up, um, at O.J. Simpson's mansion, so he was taken into custody, finally, after threatening suicide, after, um, 
yeah, exactly. Your mom isn't going to be able to do anything about this. This is an elementary school. It, yeah, yeah. No, you're screwed, sweetheart. You have to just, like, you don't, just turn yourself in. Just do it. Just turn yourself in. There's nothing you can do. So, um, he does finally go um, with police, uh, well, into custody. And with him, he's holding a um, picture of his family which yeah sure isn't it sweet but maybe you shouldn't have killed your wife um ex-wife but whatever um so here's what i believe happened um before we get into the trial um because the trial is an absolute fucking disaster uh, i can't see anything i'm gonna have to like okay the trial is crazy so this is what I believe happened. So Nicole calls Ron's like, hey, can you please deliver? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, she says, can you please deliver the, um, the, how do I put a light here? Can you please deliver the glasses to me? So she knows he's coming and she goes out to walk her dog. This is, this is just my belief of what happened based off of the events of um, what people say they saw and everything like that. So, um, and heard, obviously. So, I believe he made his way there and she was outside meeting uh, Ron and he had the glasses in his hand ready to give to her. And I think he was just at the wrong place, wrong time. I don't believe he would have gotten killed if it wasn't for the fact that he was, um, he was just there at the wrong time. So now we're going to go into the trial. So the trial went on, um, pretty soon. Uh, I was a little bitty baby, but pretty soon afterwards, and, um, it too was an absolute fucking mess. Um, it was sensationalized. Um, there was just so much going on, which there is, there's a reenactment that I think is really well done. Um, and it is on, it was on Netflix. It was called, um, People vs. O.J. Simpson. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. Um, I think it really goes into, um, the craziness of the trial and the sexism and the racism and everything that's just like that was going on at the time. Um, so at the time that this was going on, the trial, um, we're going to backtrack a little bit to where the United States was at this time. Uh, the United States um, was and honestly currently still is um, in kind of a mess when it comes to um, relations with African-American and black individuals. Um, and three years earlier, Rodney King was beaten senselessly and for absolutely no reason. Um, for f about 15 minutes straight, he suffered brain damage. He had broken teeth. Um, and um, he... he just suffered terribly um, by four LAPD police officers, and it was all caught on camera. However, they were um, acquitted um, because that's just, I guess, how America does it, right? So um, after that, there were protests, and um, the community who already really didn't trust the police, there was, there was more public distrust of the police. Um, and what this has to do with this case is the fact that, um, you know, the police being a racist entity was really well known. And unfortunately, it was proven in the O.J. Simpson case as well. Um, so one of the lead detectives was Detective Mark Furman. And he had um, collected a lot of evidence at the O.J. Simpson case. So that blood um, <clears throat> that was found um, at the on the uh, vehicle, um, everything, all this stuff was was found um, by or collected and documented by Mark Furman. So um, 
it was revealed at trial that Mark Furman was a terrible, awful racist. Um, I mean, terrible, like hard R, N-word. He talked about um, disrespecting African Americans um, and just not caring about them at all. Um, and he was torn apart, rightfully so, on, um, on the stand. So when we think about this and what happened with the case um, and with, with the justice system, um, unfortunately, the defense used this to their advantage. So, um, the defense, like I said, used this to their advantage and the prosecution focused on, um, the forensics, which, um, you know, like is really a good thing. Um, but in this case, it just wasn't. And why, um, why it wasn't really a good thing is because, um, forensics weren't really well known at the time and they focused so heavily on it. Also, who collected the forensic evidence? It was the police, the racist police. So this is how we get into why this matters. No one trusted the police and this in in includes the jury. So the defense did exactly what they're supposed to, to, to do. They put doubt in the jury's mind and OJ Simpson was acquitted of the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. And I would just like to personally thank uh, Mark Furman for this because I just believe that this wouldn't have happened if we had moral upstanding citizens as our detectives who weren't racist um, and the police itself, the SIP system wasn't a racist entity. I just don't believe that this would have happened um, because we would be able to trust that forensic evidence. We would be able to trust everything that we got from the prosecution. <clears throat> but instead, you know, the defense was able to put up a really good defense because um, there was people that just weren't trust trusting in the um, police system. So OJ Simpson was acquitted. However, later on, um, a civil lawsuit was brought on by um, Ron Goldman's family. Um, so Ron Goldman's father and his sister, they were um, really in the media a lot um, and they were really great uh, folks. Um, I think, um, who were really trying to advocate for the victims because people weren't focusing at all on the victims. They were focusing on OJ, 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 OJ. It was all about OJ. Um, so a civil suit against OJ Simpson, um, took place and, um, he actually lost the civil suit. So he was ordered to pay $33.5 million to the families of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Um, so while OJ was free, the motherfucker was broke. Um, it's not a happy ending. However, um, I think, you know, it's kind of nice that at least he's broke. Um, so kind of following up on that later on um oj's dumbass decides to write a book called if i did it um which to me it's just disgusting um it's it's rude crude just just ridiculous so um he creates i'm looking for cute animals um he it was 33.5 million dollars uh thomas um but he creates this um book and oh it's finally light outside oh thank goodness um he creates this book and uh, the proceeds, 90% of the proceeds of this book goes to the families of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. So that's good. Um, 
but you know OJ did lose the civil case and this is something that a lot of law students talk about because it's crazy that someone was to lose or they were acquitted in a criminal case but in civil case they lost so technically he was responsible for the murder in the civil case but he was not responsible for the murder in criminal trial um um yeah he definitely did not think things through um he 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 was just kind of dumb about it and but also i think that he has um this sense of he has an air about him he's kind of narcissistic in the fact that he thinks he can prove to other people that he didn't do anything um so you know that's just how it is um now, a lot of people say, like, how do, like, why would I believe that OJ did it if he was found not guilty? And I'll just be honest with you, I look at the evidence um, before the murder. Um, Nicole was beaten multiple times. She counted multiple times um, what happened to her. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just really sad um, that people, like, don't, like, take that into account, because, like, there's times, I believe, that she talked about, um, being choked, you know, and there's, I remember a study that was talked, uh, that I heard about, where, um, when someone who's in an intimate, uh, partner, violent, like, violent relationship, um, when, oh, that's a gate, gosh, God bless it, um, when they're in, the um this this situation um when they're choked a lot of times they end up being killed um men and women who are choked end up being killed um so how did he explain the blood on his car the glove so that's a great question um the defense explained saying that mark Furman planted it um, which here's the thing, the defense's job is to literally, um, put doubt in the jury's mind. And unfortunately that's exactly what happened. They put, um, they put that doubt in their mind and that's how he was able to get away with it. Um, Mark Furman actually wrote a book. I would never recommend it because fuck him. He's a racist piece of doo-doo. Um, but Mark Furman made a book about um uh, about like what happened and people actually said that he killed nicole brown simpson uh and ron goldman um there's there's theories that he did it um personally i just don't think that um uh, thomas pointed out nowadays that money would be equivalent to 54.6 million dollars for the civil judgment it feels so little um that does feel a little however um, because it's a life, like a life isn't worth nothing, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it, it does feel little, um, but, um, I mean, it's just kind of like, it, I, I, you know, I don't know. It's just a court thing. I wish I, I knew, but, um. The jury, how long did the jury take to reach a decision for the murder? You know, that's a really good question, and I don't know. I'm going to Google it right now. Let me Google it right now. How long? Um, did the jury take for O.J. Simpson? Um, They took... So the opening statements were made on January 24th, 1995. Uh, I was like a year old. Um, and the verdict was announced on October 3rd. Um, let's see. Deliberate. Wow. Okay. Um, apparently it only took four hours. Um, I need to like double check that. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I'm such a terrible researcher here. Huh. Let's see. 
And one thing I didn't even mention, like one freaking thing that happened in in the trial, which was just a shit show, is remember the glove that was found? So they decided to say, hey, Johnny Crockin literally, literally said, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. So they told, I don't know what they told OJ, but OJ put it on his hand and um, said it didn't fit. Um, he acted, he like did some acting personally. I thought it fit perfectly fine. Um, and there was, there was evidence that, um, Nicole actually bought those for him, um, from the trial. However, um, like I said, when Mark Furman came on the stand and gave so much, um, evidence that and then they the defense put him as a racist which it was true like there was recordings in his, of him being racist everything was torn apart and the prosecution had nothing um at that time because it's it does it's not believable so um let's see three months ba, 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 ba. The jury came back after less than four hours. So, Maria, good question. The DNA, um, I, I believe the DNA was matched. Don't quote me, but it was matched O.J. Simpson. However, the defense put in the jury's mind that the blood was put there by Mark Furman. So, if there's a doubt in the jury's mind, they're going to let him go. So, um, unfortunately that, that's how he was able to get, get away with it. Um, let's see, fence, here's the fence. Um, I, and it, it's, it's unfortunate, but I, I mean, that, that's how it is. However, I do have some good news, some good news. Um, so, uh, I don't remember the year, um, and I don't really even have this in my notes, but, um, in the year, I think it was around in the 2000s, um, OJ was caught stealing his own memorabilia, um, because he was trying to sell it to make money to basically, uh, he was broke. He's absolutely fucking broke. He had no money, nothing. So he did go to jail and he just recently, a few years ago, um, got out of jail. Uh, you know, he was, he's paroled, so, like, he does have, like, a parole officer. But he did, um, he did end up going to jail because he did criminal shit. Um, so there, you know, a little bit of karma was served. Of course, he wasn't put away for life like he deserved. Um, but he, um, he did have to pay those consequences a little bit um and of course uh no one really trusts him anymore and i hate to say it but the american people pretty much everyone knows that he did it um so nowadays um nicole brown simpson's family um they still talk a lot um about nicole's experience and how wonderful she was, you know, as a person and as a mother. And um, even uh, Ron's family is starting to speak out a lot more. Uh, and I would love to be able to listen to this. And I, I, I think I'm going to add this to my playlist. Um, but Kim Goldman, uh, the sister of Ron Goldman, has uh, she now has a podcast called Confronting O.J. Simpson. Um, and I really think you guys should check that out. Um because, I, I mean, Kim and Ron's father, Fred, they, they, they did what they could, you know, Ron was an innocent, they, both of them were innocent victims in this disgusting crime, and, um, I, I just think that, you know, if you want to do some, you know, support, uh, you guys should definitely check out that podcast, um, uh, and like I said, also, uh, thank you so much for following, uh, JR Dark. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you guys, um, you know, would like to help, 
um, people who are in this, um, in this situation, I am raising money for the Family Safety Center, and the Family Safety Center um, is a local center here that helps um, people who are in intimate partner um, uh, violence, uh, violent situations. So, um, so it would it would be great if you guys. Uh, if y'all have the means to do so, um, to uh, uh, be able to donate um, to this cause, it would be really awesome. Um, so the relationship, Maria, that he has with his kids, um, so it's kind of, it's, it's difficult, but apparently um, I think one of them believes that he did not do anything. And, uh, I think that's Sydney, um, Sydney still, um, uh, is close with OJ and, um, OJ's family, um, which it's, it's sad, um, but, you know, you never know what people are going through and it's really hard to, like, tell someone, hey, your dad's a murderer, you know, like, um, of course, the paparazzi, the garbage people, are all over them, you know. Um, but I believe that OJ's relationship with his kids um, is still existent. He still um, visits them. They're grown now. They are way older than, than myself. Um, but they're grown and they have families of their own. Um uh, but they, I believe that they do believe their father is innocent, um, which it's, you know, like I said, it's sad, but, um, it's just how it goes. Um, so guys, that is the story of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. Um, I want to thank you guys so much, um, for being here and for uh, supporting me, and hopefully um, you guys can, um, if, if you have the means, of course, uh, support the Family Safety Center for people who, um, who might be in situations like this. Um, so if you guys have the means, uh, definitely would appreciate uh the link is if you type exclamation point charity, it is below. But I really enjoyed sharing this story with you guys. Um, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, I will be doing more of these. Um, uh, will it be available for a few weeks? Um, yes, it, I can definitely make it available for, um, a few weeks. It, I can, um, continue to, um, have it as exclamation point charity. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, and you guys can f absolutely feel free to donate whenever. Um, and the bit um, if bits are given today, I definitely will be putting them towards, um, this, uh, this charity. Um, so thank you guys so much again. Um, I cannot wait, uh, for another episode. Um, and I will be potentially having, uh, I discussed with some friends, might be starting to have guests on uh, this live stream and uh, I will be putting this on YouTube as well um, so if you guys would like um, to you know share it around um, I would totally uh, love that because um, true crime is something that is my passion and advocating oh thank you thank you thank you for the uh, donation I really appreciate it um, there will be another episode I don't know when it's coming um, but I definitely will announce. So, um, if you haven't already, follow me on social medias. Um, I have, um, a Twitter. My Twitter is, let's go see, it is Fluffy, L-F-L-U-F-F-Y-N-U-G, 
G A M I N G, Fluffy Nug Gaming. And then we also have, um, I have an Instagram, which is Fluffy McButt Nugget. It's the same um, as I have um, my Twitch um, thing, my Twitch tag. So. Um, once again, thank you guys so much for supporting me. I really hope that I did this justice. Um, I, I hope that, uh, I did the victims, you know, good by telling their story. Um, and I will be looking forward to seeing you guys again. Um, and I really, like I said, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I will also be going live, um, probably tonight again, um, with, uh, something else. Um, with just regular gaming, so, um, yes, I am very excited for the next one, um, and, and I, like I said, I just appreciate, uh, y'all's support so, so, so much, um, it is, it's truly, um, it's truly appreciated, um, I also have a Discord, um, so if you guys have, uh, a Discord, definitely um join that discord and i will update you guys when the next episodes will be um and stay tuned because there's gonna be more stuff coming so once again thank you guys y'all are awesome and i'll see you later bye